games are the hottest business in in the entertainment industry right now, right? If you look at the you know movie business, it's you know flat to declining business. You know certainly in the United States, but around the world, um, you know the television business has a lot of struggles. You know, but the but but games is very strong, double digit growth all around the world. More people playing games than ever before. You know, Universal and Comcast agreed with me that you know we really need to have a strong uh, position in this space, and instead of licensing our IP out, we really need to start you know taking more direct ownership over our over our games, and more creative input into our games, treating it like an art form and not like a consumer product. We don't make marketing games, so we're not making games to support the movies. Um, we're making games because they make sense to be made as games. So I've got about 50 people internally uh, that we've hired in the last year. We have a, we have a um, uh, small but really strong design team uh, led by Tim Fitzrandolph, who's best known for Where's My Water. He's an incredibly creative guy. Um, absolutely no ego, but one of the unique things about Tim is that he's he's a designer programmer. You know, probably 60-70% of what we do right now is mobile, um, but we're also doing, uh, you know, some console games as well. It's always important that you kind of get the, the IP creator involved in the beginning. If you look at the industry, kind of on one end you have Star Wars, which is always about like super canonical, true to canon, all the events in the game need to, you know, all the content needs to line up against what's happening in the broader Star Wars universe. And then kind of on the other end of the spectrum, you have what, what Warner's done with Batman, where, you know, the Arkham storyline is a game-specific storyline. It borrows from the comics and from the movies and things you know about Batman. But, you know, if they want to kill the Joker in, in Arkham, they can do that. And, you know, no one's saying, hey, you didn't kill the Joker in the movie. The games are really about agency, right? And interactive choices. And so what is that fantasy that I'm going to live out when I come into the games? The the sensibilities of the night school guys in terms of their writing style, those who don't know, the, the entire Mr. Robot game looks like a messaging app and all of the gameplay is delivered through what look like text messages. During the course of that Mr. Robot game, you have to socially hack other people and you have to um, you know, get them to give you information, you have to blackmail people, and so it gets very emotionally intense. In, 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 in 20 or 30 years, I don't think there's gonna be a difference between the, the movie business and the game business. I think there will still be linear entertainment like TV and movies, but I mean, if you think about what a revolution non-linear non video editing was to the to the you know the entertainment business, and then when you look at VR, I think VR is the thing that's really forcing the collision of games and movie studios to have to work together because you know I think they've often been seen as separate things, but if you're really making a good VR experience, it's a little bit of the th it's a little bit of a theme park. It's a little bit, because you're thinking about storytelling in space. It's very much like a game, because you're thinking about interactivity and design for interactivity. You're thinking about, you know, some level of game mechanics, you know, and it's a lot about storytelling as well. So all of those disciplines have to come together and make a good VR experience. So I think that, you know, you're in the right place if you want to be in the future of entertainment.